So I just packed my bags and I'm off to two countries. Country number one to speak at a conference and country number two for an offsite. But wait, let's rewind the clock a little. Let's go back to the time when I was an anxious kid trying to understand what colleges are and how I can get a decent job after graduating from 12th. Maybe something like 12 lakh per annum, that'd be pretty good. And there's this college called IITs that a lot of people go to and 12 lakh seems like a very average number to get out of there. This advice that was sort of applicable a few years ago is no longer relevant and in this video we'll be discussing why at least if you're trying to get into tech your ambition and your will to learn is all that matters thanks to the internet. I'll be describing the pseudo benefits that you get from a tier 1 college and how in today's market if you're not from a good college or even if you haven't gone to college at all what path you can take to crack that dream offer in a step-by-step -step fashion. With that, let's get right into the video. When thinking about tech, I generally divide people into two parts, the models and the prodigies. The prodigies are 5% of the people who really like computer science, have been doing computer science for a really long time. And for these people, frankly, college does not matter at all. A lot of these people don't make it to IITs and that's because they're not good at physics, chemistry and maths. They're only good at computer science. That's what they like to do. They get into some random college and end up making their way up and do really, really well in their lives. But for everyone else, the 95% of us, including me, the initial the initial motivation of getting into tech comes because of money. We all want to crack that first offer that gets us a 10 lakh, 12 lakh, 20 lakh per annum package. And this was a place where being from a tier 1 college helped a lot. All the big tech companies knew there are IITs in India, went to IITs for placements and got the top talent from there. But eventually, there's such a huge supply demand arbitrage that these companies are now completely open to getting a good software engineer, doesn't matter where they're from. Recently, people who worked at Google for around 10 years got fired. Which basically comes to tell you that today what matters is not a pedigree, it does not matter how many years you've worked at a company, it does not matter how much you've kissed your manager's ass, it does not matter how much you've buttered your manager. There is no longer an incentive for these big companies to hire more and more and they want very specific talented people irrespective of which college they're from. But let me take the other side here. Let's say these companies do want people only from IITs and NITs. In a year, not more than 2000 good graduates are coming out of these colleges. And the number of jobs out there are much more than that. The privilege that comes with being from a tier one college is slowly diminishing, especially when it comes to tech jobs. And if you are a person who is from a tier two college, tier three college, or even a tier one college, I would not give your college too much importance when it comes to cracking a big job. I'll tell you where a big college does help though. I went to IIT Roorkee and what happens in IITs and IITs is that people are coming from all over India and gathering into sort of a pseudo remote place, especially for colleges like IIT Roorkee or IIT Kharagpur. And since there's not a lot to do outside the college, the peer group that you get here is really strong. Usually these are a bunch of very ambitious people. And when you spend your time with a lot of ambitious people, you will also become ambitious. And in every college, you can find such a small group of ambitious people. All you have to do is find that group of people who want a job in tech. Eventually, it's not the college that helps, it's the people that are around you. And if you can find a bunch of folks who are really ambitious, there's no real difference between a tier one college or a tier two college or a tier three college for that matter, when it comes to getting a job. There are other things that you get from a tier one college. Let's break your life into two parts for these four years from 18 to 22. On the left is your college life and on the right is you trying to become a software developer. The thing on the left, yes, it'll help if you're from a tier one college you might have a better college life these colleges have great festivals uh, the peer group as i mentioned is nice usually everyone's a hostler so you have a lot of fun but the thing on the right you trying to get that dream offer or trying to get a job that really doesn't get affected by which college you're from and i have a bunch of examples a bunch of people who are working with me who did not go to the best colleges in india but are still working right besides me and doing great in their careers there's no real difference when we sit to code together there's no real disparity or trauma that comes from you being a, from a tier two or a tier three college. In the past, I've seen people from IITs and non-IITs get different packages. And I've seen people who are not from IITs perform much better than the people who are from IITs. This creates such a weird dynamic when you're in the workplace because you know you're earning more even though you're performing half as much as the other person. And if you're not from a good college, you can be that person. Eventually, your salary will outpace everyone and within three to four years, what will matter is whether or not you're running the show at your company, whether or not you became a complacent employee or you're the person who everybody is looking up to 
and there's a high level of dependency on you as i said there are layoffs happening right now and trust me they're not looking at college degrees they're only looking at what impact you've created and over the next 2 to 3 years there won't be any bulk hiring there won't be pedigree hiring companies will be looking for a specific skill set and hence it's a level playing field if you're good at web development full stack development ai or web3 you will get a job period it does not matter which college you're from and how you get that job i have repeated this again and again i'm going to say this again i'll give you four concrete points on how you can get it and in the following videos let me know which one of these you'd like me to dive deeper into the first one and i'm highly biased here is contributing to open source i can't emphasize this enough how much this helped me again i'm from an iit so if you think i would have gotten the same job that i did today purely based on that i can tell you that's wrong i have a lot of friends who are from iits and everyone took different paths i specifically know the companies that i currently work at and the sort of satisfaction i get working at these companies i wouldn't have gotten that if i wasn't into open source so if you can do this if you're sort of capable enough to contribute to open source and if you're not let me know i'll try to make videos that's the most important thing in my opinion again everyone's opinion is different but this is the thing that's helped me a lot and this is definitely where there's a level playing field the code is open source the issues are out there as long as you're good you can contribute to them no one's asking you for your degree no one's asking you what cgpa you had as long as you're contributing they'll get you in you actually have a lot of incentive to solve these issues if you can solve these issues faster than a full time employee of that company is why would they not hire you so look for open source projects look for companies that are highly funded and keep their code open source either their complete code or a certain part of their code and start contributing to it eventually someone will reach out and at least you'll get that interview irrespective of what college you're from the second one is even more difficult develop a good side project that ends up doing well so you can open source projects and i've personally open sourced a few projects myself if a project that you make starts to get used by a lot of companies you can one get sponsorship to get reached out very actively because you're actively maintaining a project that a lot of these companies are using so any big company or well funded company that's using that project heavily and needs help there will reach out to you again this is probably very difficult so i won't speak too much to it because this is a beginner friendly channel let's move on to the next point data structures and algorithms competitive programming it's the evil that you need if you want a simple stable fang or normal big tech job um the good thing here is the path is fairly simple again today it's sort of weird because the market is crazy and there are hiring freezes out there but eventually this will ease out and when it does especially if you're a fresher uh, most probably you'll get hired from your dsa skills so focus there and the only thing to do there is solve as much lead code as you can and get very familiar with these common questions that get asked during an interview finally if all of these seem very difficult start working at a startup these companies usually require a lot of help and are okay teaching people as long as you're willing to learn so you don't have to be the best out there the good thing you get by working in a startup is that the environment is very fast paced hence you'll know a lot of things by the end of your tenure versus if you worked at a big tech company most probably you focused on a very small part and hence you did not touch as many segments as you would in a startup plus the perks aren't too bad especially today startups are actually creating value and when they create value their employees get paid in terms of stability at least in the market today you'll get fired from either a startup or a big tech company if you're not good especially if the market is so crunchy as it is right now your skills are all that matter so i wouldn't personally worry about any sort of stability issues as long as you join a decently funded startup i feel like this video was very staggered and all over the place my goal here was to just let you know looking at the market right now colleges are something that people have just stopped asking at least from what i've looked at and at least when i'm interviewing someone that's the last thing i look at and if you think of taking the path of becoming a remote developer working for a company in the us uk singapore anyways these companies won't know what a college is or what is a tier 1 college or a tier 2 college and if that's a job you strive to achieve there's a newsletter link to the description where i will send out remote opportunities as they come by with that let's end the video and i'll see you in the next one